Dear hashed followers, in this video I want to show you how you can create your own runtime persistency. But first, what is runtime persistency? You see, I modify, for example, the columns of a control. In this example, I press for save. Normally, if you change the screen and go back, it's gone. In this example, thanks to Reiner, he has created this um, example with the possibility to load it again. It's not only the column size, it's also each property you want. For example, in alarm control, for me, it's important to save my filter. You see, I add here a filter, which is including in one. You see, now you see only the alarm one. I save it. Before we go back, we have this property or the setting auto load. So if you activate it, the setting is automatic loaded there is an additional script in the loading event of the screen. This works not only on the alarm control, uh, it's also possible for each control. In this example, in the second example, for the trend control, you have the possibility, for example, to modify the line width, the line color, switch different trend modes, but you have also the possibility to add a tag in this example, we have trend number three, and we want to add an additional online tag. If this test tag connected, and you see he is start drawing this orange line. So we have connected trend number three. We added a little bit of common settings of the control. I don't need a toolbar, the legend, or the ruler. We save our settings and reopen the screen and you see all the settings we did before are there. Um, this does not only work for one screen, later I will show you he saved the username in this file. So if you have a different user, like here, second user Pike, and we open a second session, it could be also a second client, this is also working. And you see the trend control looks like in the beginning and you have here the possibility to have a complete different configuration. Like we select a different line width with a different color, like this blue, and the second trend should be red or no oh, green, it's okay. And if we save it and refresh the second session, you see the settings are complete independent from each other. How does it work? Let's take a look into the configuration of this project. You will find this project in the video description. I will upload it to GitHub and you can download it and use it. I have opened the screen for the trend control and the important button here is the save button. If you check the events, there are three important steps. The first one is uh, your control. So if you have multiple controls, you need to define multiple controls here. And in the second step, you define which properties should be saved. And in the last step, if we scroll down, you see I call a global function to save the settings. And if we have a look to the global function here, you see there is a functionality for the saving. And in the global definition, this is a setting you need maybe to adapt it. Here you find the path where the user settings are saved. In my case, it's on the D drive. If you have no D drive or a different setting, you need to adapt it. If you check the folder, you see it's called my persistency and you see for each control and user, you get a JSON file here. And let's take a look into, you see there's all the properties of our trend control saved. How can you add your own control to this? In this example, I use a screen window and want to adapt the scripts for the using. The first, what you need to do is in the save event, normally you do not click on it. You can also put it in the closed event of the screen. We add second constants and select our screen window. Then we need a second setting here to save 
all the properties of our screen window we want to save. Call it user settings number one. And how you find out what is the name of the properties it works is in a video I have shown before. You select the search the property you need, do and right click on it and copy the property name. Go back to our script and add it here. Additional to the property we need quotation marks and a comma for the next one. I don't want to add all the properties here for me and my screen window. It's important to have the, the size of it and the position. So I replace it here. And the last step, we need a second call of our saving functionality and add our control and user settings we have added before to it. And in the second step, we adapt our load event. First, we add our control we have add before our screen window and we call the loaded event a second time and hand over the control. And let's check how it works in one time. You see we have the screen window and I currently move to position. The first nothing happens. If I change the position and the size and we save it and we go back and we load it, it's there that the loaded event happens automatic. We need to adapt the loaded event of the screen. So if we take a look to it, click on the screen, go to the loaded event, it looks nearly the same as the load event from the button. So you need here to add control, our screen window. And after this, we call the loaded functionality with our control. If we save it in runtime and reopen the page of the trend control, you see the position of the screen window is saved. I hope this example will help you to create your own persistency. See you!